Are all these wireless CarPlay adapters crap? Seriously, why are they so bad? If you found this video by it being suggested, I do all things related to Apple, the good and the bad. If that sounds like your thing, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and of course, ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video when I post it. Thank you. In a recent video, I tried to use a wireless CarPlay adapter that could also access YouTube and Netflix. It didn't go all that well. Now, if you want to see that video, go ahead and click the card right up here, and I'll also put it down in the description. You can watch it after this video. Now, I also mentioned more simple adapters that just give you wireless access to Apple CarPlay. I also mentioned my wife was using one that I bought her for Christmas, and it was pretty awesome. You sure about that? Uh, update. It's not so awesome anymore. But it is good. So what changed? That is why we're here. Oh, 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 wait, 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 time out, time out. In the process of making this video, I discovered something that I know is going to surprise you. So stick around to the end of the video to see what it is. So let's do this. So let's talk about what CarPlay is and how it works. It is wired and wireless CarPlay that is integrated in today's cars that are meant to be seamless. You get in, you start the car, boom, CarPlay starts up, you pick your music, or if you use Maps, or any other accessible app in CarPlay, and you go. Is it always perfect? For me, I would say 90 to 95% of the time it does work. Now, I own a 2017 GMC Sierra, and that is working off even older software. Car companies don't want to spend that much money on the same generation vehicle each year. I make car parts for the American working man because that's what I am, and that's who I care about. Yeah, you get some things here and there, but it's pretty much the same garbage every year. What I'm saying is the issue isn't all on Apple when stuff doesn't work. But I can also point to GM and whatever brand of cable I'm using at the time. Now for the third party solutions. It's pretty much the same thing that I just mentioned with Apple's integrated setup. You get in, you start the car, connect, yada yada yada, and off you go. <laughs> I've tried a couple different kinds of these solutions when they first came out and they had a lot of issues. From lag, disconnects, no connection, etc. But I was happy to not have to plug in, so I lived with those issues. Whoa, kind of a mess in here. It's fine, everything is fine. As time went on, the tech got better. And that brings me to now. I was content with the solution that I was using for a while, even if it had its problems. You sit on a throne of lies. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I picked up a solution for my wife for her 2021 Santa Fe, and it worked well for a little while. I even thought it might be time for me to upgrade. Then I did a video on the ultimate wireless setup because I was actually thinking about going that way for my truck. Needless to say, that product killed any hope of me wanting to spend 260 and more for nothing but headaches. Back to the simplest solution. I just want my CarPlay to work, and it seems like I could do it for a relatively cheap price. Or so I thought. I looked on Amazon, read reviews, even watched some videos, and started picking up what I thought might be the best ones. Because God knows the ones I was using weren't working well. Here are the ones that I chose. Now there are a bunch more out there, and I would love to hear what you're using, and if you're happy with it. I would even be more happy to try them out if you're having good luck. So go ahead and like this video and leave a comment about your thoughts if you use one or if you have any questions that I may have missed. The best and quickest way that we can break this down is let's just cover the good of these units. Thankfully, these products have reached a level of proficiency that I feel like puts them all at about the same level of satisfaction. They all work decent when CarPlay is connected. I can listen to music, use my maps, podcasts, again, whatever apps Apple allows, they work just fine. Now the volume of the music works as if the device is plugged in. And what I mean by that is it's loud and clear. Sometimes on Bluetooth, the volume might not be as loud and it's a little bit muffled. This is typical on older cars that don't have CarPlay at all. The other thing about these third-party systems is currently on Apple's OEM system, wired or wireless, while you're in drive, the amount of access is limited so as to not distract the driver. If the passenger, for example, needs to type in an address or look for other music, it needs to be done via Siri, and sometimes we all know that that does not work well. 
If I had arms, I would beat your ass, then yeah, I would drive. Right. On these systems, those limitations don't exist. You've got full access to your music and a keyboard for map searches. I'm not sure how and why companies are able to do this, but it works for now. <laughs> that can be good and bad for obvious reasons. No matter the cost of the unit I tried, which ranged from about 50 to 150, they all worked about the same. There wasn't much of a difference. One of the companies had an adapter that offers a USB-A port, which is nice if you only have one port in your car, and then you're at least able to charge your phone while you're using the device. See? Pretty cool. That could be a huge factor in your decision. This one from AutoCast has a button that actually allows you to disconnect from CarPlay altogether, which is actually nice sometimes if you want to listen through your speakers because there's a big delay in the audio through the radio and it just, that can be annoying. More on that in a second. Now that's pretty much all I have to say about the good. It's pretty basic. Now it's the bad that might cause you to skip it and actually just go back to the cord, even with the limitations Apple has in place on their side. For many people, including myself, most of these are just minor inconveniences to get wireless. When listening to music, it will skip around during the song. Speed up, jump to the next song, stop playing, or start the song over again. Start the song over again. Now this happens every once in a while. When tapping on an app, it won't respond and takes a couple extra seconds. If you have more than one page of apps, swiping can lag out a little bit and it doesn't move or moves too much. Again, nothing most people can't live with and let's be honest this happens on Apple setup too see sometimes wired carplay doesn't work either but uh, I'm not done yet the biggest turnoff for these devices is when it just won't work at all now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it's all the products fault either it could be the fact that my vehicle is over six years old and the technology is not working as well However, the same could be said for all other cars. When you first connect any of these devices, the directions are all the same. You gotta make sure that you're disconnected from all your Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections before you set up. This can be cumbersome because if you have Bluetooth devices or Wi-Fi saved, it doesn't let you just disconnect. You have to forget the networks and it's kind of a pain to set up again if you're not too familiar with all that. Not a big deal if you're knowledgeable, or don't have a password that no one will ever remember, and you have to look it up every time you want to enter it. Looking at my father-in-law. <laughs> now, one time isn't the end of the world for setting this up. It's the other times it can be an issue. Yes, other times. Every single one of these units acted the same way during all the times that I use them. They would show connect the via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the phone, but nothing on the screen. At first I thought it was because I was trying out too many different ones at once and the process was getting crossed up, so I decided to stick with each device for a week to eliminate that variable. The same things would occur on all of these. They would connect with zero issues when I get into the truck. Sometimes it would be connected and playing even before I start the truck. Other times it would take a minute or two and it would connect after my truck seemed to finish its setup of the system. The real pain in the ass times is when it wouldn't connect at all. I would sit in the connection screen the entire time or there is zero indication that it was even trying to connect. I would drive to where I'm going and it would never work, a short or a long drive. I would come back and sometimes it would be fine and others it wouldn't work at all. I tried everything. I hard rebooted my phone. I checked to see if there was a firmware update for the device. I would unplug the unit, try again. I would forget all of the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the unit to try to get it to work again. Sometimes it would connect, other times I would give up and just walk away. What the? Here. Only for it to work the next time I got in the truck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I even
even thought it might have been because I was using beta iOS 17, so I reverted back to 16 to see if that was the issue. Same result. Almost every single one of these units did this. It does get cumbersome having to constantly do this. I have multiple USBs in my truck and they all out connection to CarPlay. So I was constantly switching them back and forth to see if maybe that was a bad one. I would sit in my truck for five to 10 minutes trying to get it to connect. After getting so annoyed, I would just plug my phone in and be done with it. Now I'll be the first to admit, I love having access to all of my music through the screen, being able to bring up the keyboard on maps while I'm driving and put something in. Even if I just limit myself to using it when I was at the stoplight or let my wife operate it, that's the safe thing to do. <laughs> Also, my wife says that hers kind of does the same thing and she just listens to Sirius XM and doesn't use it at all. I just can't imagine many other people bothering to keep using the devices if this is what you constantly have to deal with. Okay, time out. Remember that part in the beginning of the video that I jumped in? Same, hair, clothes, different. It's not all that bad. And I purposely delayed this video to test out what I thought I found. I decided to pick up four more of the wireless CarPlay adapters to see if maybe that they were newer and they worked better. Of the four, three of these adapters did something the rest of the ones I tested didn't do. They just worked. Every single time I got in my truck, I started it up, these connected within 15 seconds. Many times, even faster. Could it be something to do with my vehicle software? Eh, perhaps. But there is one thing that I noticed that is different between these and the rest of them. The original units that I tried only transmitted at 5 gigahertz. These three that I got transfer not only in 5 gigahertz, but also 2.4 gigahertz. And actually this one does 5.8 gigahertz. So what does all that mean? The 5 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz has a smaller range, but is more powerful and should in turn have a better experience. The 2.4 gigahertz is not as powerful, but it's a little bit more broad. In my truck, I didn't think that that would be a problem considering it's right next to everything. I don't know if that has anything to do with the experience that I had. Maybe it's because that they're newer, but that's something that I noticed. So of these three, my favorite is the, you know what, I I can't pronounce the name. I'm, I'm gonna butcher it, I'm sorry. Eliac, Eliac, E-L-E-A-C-C. -C. You know what, it doesn't matter. What I liked about this one is the fact that you could detach the cable and get a longer cable or replace it if it's broken. And I actually, I like the size of the unit itself. <gasps> That's what she said? And the I to do, again, I don't claim to be able to pronounce any of these. This one is permanently attached and that's okay, but if I wanted to mount it outside of where I plug it in or in the console, I'm afraid that the wire isn't long enough. And once again, being permanently connected, if something goes wrong with it, you, you, you're stuck. And this one from AutoSky is, is okay, but it's just not for me. I'm, I'm not a fan of plugging it into the adapter by itself. It's not gonna fit in my console because it's too tall and it won't close. I'm also not a fan of plugging in the adapter because that's just another point of failure. And one time I did move it around and it disconnected. So I kind of was like real delicate with it and placed it. So if that's gonna happen, that's bad. Hopefully one of these would work for you. There are three different kinds of setups with the same results as far as my experience and maybe one of those will work for you. But all in all, I mean, these three were awesome. And if you try it when you get it on Amazon, and it doesn't work for you, you got 30 days to send it back. So there's that. Now I'm gonna keep looking. If you happen to have one that you use and really like, go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. In the meantime, go ahead and check out this video right here. That is on the ultimate wireless CarPlay plus Netflix, blah, 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 blah. Uh -uh. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notification bell so you won't miss my next video. See ya.